it's kind of laying out in a pretty simple manner, in my opinion, these these this breadth of tech tools that you might not have known existed and kind of some basic best approaches for how to use them. But at the end of the day, each artist is going to face their own, you know, battle with how to communicate using those tools. And I feel like that's where you get into really interesting conversations of like, how do you phrase this? What do I offer? Why am I doing this? How do I, how do I pull this off? I feel like Founder is really great for that um, because... You are now listening to the Creative Juice Podcast brought to you by Indopreneur.io. Welcome back to Creative Juice. I am your host, Circa. And today we are talking to the, I guess, the co-captains of the indie founder revolution that has occurred in Entrepreneur with, uh, with the complete revamp of the indie founder coaching program uh, and now being run by Corinne and who is assisted by our own Jesse Gillenwalters, who's a graduate of the former founder program. Today, they're here to talk to us about what it's been like working hands-on with indies on their marketing uh, over the last, I would say, like half year, right, since relaunch? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So how's it going, guys? How's it been? <laughs> good. Things are good. It's fantastic. <laughs> it's a great, great day uh, to be here. <laughs> good, good. Once again. Good. Well, yeah, um, I wanted to get you guys on the podcast because there's been – I think this is we're on our like third or fourth round of founders, and um, I'm I've been hearing a lot of amazing testimonials, and I kind of just wanted to hear from you guys about what it's been like working with these indies and kind of what they've been able to accomplish. So, uh, sort of kind of start off with uh, how how Jesse became a part of the coaching team on Founder, and kind of how how you've operated that thus far, Karen. Yeah, well, so Jesse was, um, you know, for those of you who don't know, Jesse started with the agency in, uh, when did you start contracting for NDX? Um, I think around June, July. Okay. Cool. Okay. So in the beginning of the summer, Jesse was working, you know, as an NDX tech. And uh, when we opened the Nashville office in September, he started working here. Um, and so, you know, that was really, we were in the process of the 12 week at that point, and we were about to launch the next eight week founder. So, um, I asked him if he would kind of help me out just looking at engagement in the group and pitching it on people's questions. And he was really stoked to do it. Um, and so there was like, oh, I remember when we got into the, the next eight week session, I went to London. <laughs> oh, I yeah. was I was gone for a month on tour and I was like, man, this is going to be challenging. Um, so Jesse was like, well, I can I can do it. And I was like, are you sure? And he was like, yeah, yeah. I'd love to do it. <laughs> oh, yeah, I did. Yeah, I did love to do it. Right. Yeah. So once that happened, I, you know, it he kind of got thrown into the fire a little bit with it, but he excelled at it. And from then on, I was like, okay, well let's, you do this so well, like let's transfer this over to your hands. Um, and so that's kind of how he ended up coming into it. Yeah. It seems like, uh, like Jesse, you were sort of naturally suited for this, having sort of received the, like, you're, you're, you have like direct contact with the marketing promise of founder being that like, you went through it and then you were like kind of gained a control over your own marketing, but also started marketing professionally, you know? Yeah, I was, it's, as you say, like I was feeling everything that the founders were feeling at some point or another, um, either going through the original version of the founder, uh, program or just being, you know, a student of entrepreneur. Right. But uh, you know, I was, and I know you all know this, but I've been obsessed with, applying the entrepreneur strategies like ever since I'd known about it. Um, and even outside of, you know, uh, kind of my day jobs along the way where I was kind of bringing in this marketing knowledge to different things outside of that, I was also helping anyone, like anyone that would listen, I was telling about it or anyone that I could help in my friend's group. 
uh, my network of musicians who needed marketing help. I was like pushing them towards this or showing them how to do things. So, um, yeah, I've always been in that mode of like being a student and kind of a teacher simultaneously, I guess, of our, of our information. Yeah. So, okay. So when it came time, well, Corinne, kind of what was your experience going through that first 12 week and working directly with people? Like who were some standout students of that round? Oh, man. Wow. Yeah. Well, so one of the students that we had in the class uh, was Chris Robley, the CD baby, which was great because he's already implemented so many of our strategies and run multiple funnels and, um, you know, was going through. He's done a couple of different launches, some for singles and some for, um, you know, longer projects. So it was really great because it kind of gave me a perspective of someone who's been around with us for a long time. Um, you know, there were a couple of other indies of that level as well. And, but then we also had beginners, you know, um, of multiple different genres. And so it was, it was one of those things where it was the first iteration and I was like, is this gonna work? (laughs) You know, I had people on all these different tracks and whatever. Um, but seeing how the more advanced indies like Chris ended up interacting with the newer people, um, you know, some of the newer people were like actually people who had been around the company for a long time, but just like couldn't get the gumption from themselves because of their life or because of, you know, just needing some more specific help, just hadn't done anything yet. And then some of them, I think Leroy, uh, one of our one of our newer students was Leroy. He had just come into the entrepreneur infrastructure, like I think that month. He was really you know fresh on the company. So just seeing how they interacted together made me realize that setting apart these different tracks probably wasn't necessary. And that was one of the first things that I learned. Um, I know Chris probably was doing like a free plus shipping and hailing funnel while we were going through it, and just watching him and everyone else kind of share the different technical difficulties they were having with various things, um, you know, it was definitely, it, it was just really fun to watch them kind of hack through these things together. Yeah, that's awesome. And I know that, um, I, cause I had asked, uh, Jesse to just like gather up any reviews that he could find from students like within the group before we ran our sort of like black Friday sale, which included indie founder for people who had sort of been with entrepreneur for a while. Um, and yeah, like uh, some of the things that I was reading, it was like, holy crap, like this is exactly kind of what we had been wanting out of our like training stack is like people to be like, okay, this clicked like this. I now understand from a holistic standpoint, like what, how this all like ties together, you know? (laughs) Mm -hmm. Yeah. It was crazy. Cause I was like, these sound made up. Yeah. (laughs) Right. right. No, they, they were really, they were really impassioned and like robust. Yeah. And it made me think about, um, I mean, I, I was similarly, uh, I guess blown away by like how on the money they, f- they felt, but it's interesting what we're kind of teaching everything about entrepreneur. It's kind of like a lifestyle change. I think founder is a really good aid of kind of nailing in that, that habit or that perspective of like, it's not just applying tech skills. It's like a, kind of a worldview shift. And I think a lot of that was coming out in the, uh, class. Yeah. So it's, kind of like working directly with these indies over these last couple of rounds, Jesse, what, what are some of the main challenges that you feel that people come in with like less how they phrase it, but more kind of what you diagnose in the beginning? Yeah, I think the kind of obvious hurdle, which is kind of a funny one is kind of people get in and uh, into the class and they're like, Oh, we're going to, we're going to go, do it. Like we're going to do it now. Like every week I'm going to go do something. Right. You know, it's like, I I guess there's kind of that activation or that accountability aspect of like, I've, you know, in the back of my mind, I was, the theoretical student has, has been saying to themselves, Oh, I'm going to do a fan finder this year, you know? And then that year comes and goes and they don't do it or, or something to that effect. But when they're in founder, it's like, everyone's like, well, here's my plans. I'm writing them down. I'm sharing them. I'm interacting with other people. And I feel like people, um, initially might have a, an apprehension to 
<laughs> you know, they see that task of like, oh, wait, I got to go do it. And they're like, oh, I don't know if I'm ready or should I do this or do, how much money or like, so it's kind of this getting a lay of land that they all of a sudden have to face. And I think that's the initial reaction. Yeah. 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 What do you feel like, what do you feel are the main challenges that, that Indies are trying to overcome in their career? Like what, you know, what are people kind of coming to it for? Do you feel? Yeah, I think it's a lot of it, um, is kind of permission stage building into those that, that aren't familiar. Maybe they're jumping in on the cast pretty green. Um, you know, email subscribers and kind of building up a true list of fans. I know we probably talk, you know, you know, we talk about it all the time on the, on creative juice, but kind of what we see as kind of our ironclad list of fans is really our email list. And there's a lot of discussions around that, um, as kind of the immediate goal of people like building up this permission list is what was what we call it. The email list. And then leveraging from there in terms of creating revenue that can be a little bit more predictable and scalable moving forward. I would say a lot of people are trying to jump that hurdle. Yeah. I think too, we do have some indies who have. I was going to ask you the same question. Like, (laughs) yeah, indies who have like come kind of to a head where they're like, okay, I tried something and it didn't work. And they are. You know, they're, it's funny because some people show some apprehension like this didn't work and it's not going to work. And then they come in to like challenge us <laughs> and we're like, uh, we'll get it to work. Let's go. You know, <laughs> and I think they it's great because I think people realize that um, it's not that there's this one size fits all. And there's a lot of um, intellectual investment and, you know, some more advanced strategies that come with making a funnel kind of thing work for an artist and they feel like there's a barrier from them accomplishing that. Um, so I, I think that's, what's been great. I, I like when indies come in and they're like, let me like, you know, I, I want to dig into the trenches of what didn't work for them. In fact, that's something that's in the very first assignment is asking them what they did that worked or, and what results they felt that garnered for them? And then what have they tried that didn't work? And that's something that we then kind of keep, not just for them to know, but also for us to keep in the back of our minds as we're going through the rest of the assignments and the rest of the execution is like, okay, this is what Joe said they struggled with or something that didn't work. So how can we tailor what we're now going over with him throughout this eight week session to remedy that? Uh, what are the pivots that we can recommend? What are the things that he needs um, that's, you know, a little bit more poignant in fixing this immediate problem? Because we know he has all the assets ready to go. He just can't get that campaign to lift, right? So that's one of the easiest things that we can kind of help people develop and fix quickly um, so that they can get results pretty fast since everything's already built. Yeah. Um, I think that, uh, having people come into the, the whole group and sort of like, (laughs) like have this attitude of like, well, this didn't work. Like, you know, let's see if you can make it work. Like, right. That's, it's cool that we can show them the way, but it also kind of gives us this like, like, like this, um, this feedback that we can use to then improve like you know, everything that we offer because, you know, it's hard to make a training that people don't treat as like, Oh, I do this and then I get this result. Right. Mm -hmm. You know? Um, and, and people are used to a marketing promise kind of across the board. That's like that, where it's like, look, guaranteed you're going to, you know, you're going to get famous overnight or something like that. (sighs) Yeah. And, and so yeah, like like teaching people that it is a skill and a set of skills and that, you know, not everyone wants it, but if you do want it, like it's rewarding. Mm-hmm. Um that's that can be incredibly that can be incredibly difficult like to do with just a just a training that people go through. Um right. what's kind of been like like have there been any disparities between like what you feel that they should already know having gone through our training and what they sort of like conceptualize coming into the, the group for the, for the founder class? Yeah. I mean, the, the loudest thing is always fit fun. Um, 
that's the thing. Like, cause people will put stuff in the group in the founder group and they'll be like, man, I can't figure this out. And I will literally Google something and then be like, Google told me this, you know, <laughs> and I can right. be a little bit more assertive because everybody in the class knows I want them to succeed. I'm not being a dick. Like this is literally for me to help you, you know, and they, they know that I'm enthusiastic about their success. Self-efficacy, right? Yeah. yeah get them to absolutely. To so like teaching people how to find the answers. I mean, sometimes it is as simple as just Googling a phrase and people just don't think of it because they want to ask an expert. And there's a lot of trash right. on the internet that could be wrong, you know, so I don't necessarily blame everyone for that. But I think that that's something that we've had the opportunity to kind of highlight is how easy it is to find different information. Um, you know, obviously they can ask us and we're happy to answer the question. Um, but also there's a wealth of knowledge out there that is how we learned it. Right. Um, and so that's, that's been something that has been kind of, it's nice to have that honesty and know that we can just be very like, this is the answer without a lot of sugar coating, um, because they, they've already been, given the preface of like, we care about you succeeding mm -hmm. and we're not going to be, you know, jerks to you while you're going through this process. So there's already that context there, you know? Yeah. And I think so. Like, I know that people probably don't want to hear that. Like a, one of their major hurdles is not informational, but it is sort of like habitual. It's like, uh, I think a lot of musicians become musicians because they learned, experimentally or they learned through instruction or they learned, you know, they learned via, um, imitation. So it's right. like three pathways mm -hmm. that sort of like all don't have anything to do with like referencing information. Some people do learn by referencing information. Some people read support documentation. Some people read user manuals, you know, but that I would say like, there's a lot of musicians out there who didn't learn that way. And don't have those sort of like inbuilt skills for, for like, like discerning what's true and false out there on the internet, you right. know, and referencing information and stuff. And so like that, that can be a huge hurdle to like self-efficacy for a lot of indies is like, oh, maybe the reason that like independent musicians think business is so hard is because it involves a lot more self-efficacy in terms of how you learn. You know? Right. Yeah. I think, you know, that's something that we do see in the trainings. And, and one thing, like I was talking about last week, like why we say like, Hey, go through these trainings, mm -hmm. you know, before you start, because we're not going to revisit trainings. Like it, right. it, why would you pay us for that? <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, it's funny how many coaching programs out there are that, that are like, coaching you through the different modules. And, and I understand why that could be valuable in some cases, but I think for us, our, you know, entrepreneur training is such a strict outline. It's so structured that, um, getting into the facets and nuances of everything during those trainings doesn't make sense. Mm -hmm. Um, you're just there to execute something. So in our case, with founders, like we're able to be like, okay, go through this training. So then when we're in the class, and people are like, what about this and this? It's, and I'll be like, go back to this module of this trading, <laughs> you know? Um, yeah. And, you know, or even sometimes like go back and read the email again, you know, with the instructions for the assignment or whatever. Um, and I think it just enables people to start feeling like, okay, like I am directly responsible for my success or failure in this. And a lot but of people But also that these don't... things don't have to be that hard. It's just a yeah. change in, a, in the assumption that like, oh, the answer is probably out there. I just didn't look hard enough. Right. And I think what that helps them do is just change how they function in the future, you know, and make them feel right. enabled and powerful and able to, you know, deduce these things more and more on their own versus having someone outline a checkbox for them, you know. Yeah, I, I think that like a major hurdle to seeing the big picture for a lot of people just in any like type of like business is overwhelm. Like when you feel yeah. overwhelmed, you can't look at the big picture and look at how all these things work as a whole because you just feel like you're already overloaded with like possibility and information. And like so 
a comforting assumption that we have, like I think uh, across our whole team is that like, look, the information's out there and, and there will be a way to figure it out. We don't have to panic as if it doesn't exist, you know? And, yeah. and that's like, I, I think musicians are used to learning communally as well, which is why we see a lot of musicians like asking their peers for help. And that's great to a degree, but like, there's nothing that beats that kind of self-efficacy where you can just like, I, I can find any answer, (laughs) Yeah, (laughs) you know, I think, um, another component of, of this kind of communal discovery of things and, uh, you know, these kind of more creative answers that people are often looking for is, you know, like our trainings, it's not rote memorization, but it's kind of laying out in a pretty simple manner, in my opinion, these, these, this breadth of tech tools that you might not have known existed and kind of some basic best approaches for how to use them. But at the end of the day, each artist is going to face their own, you know, battle with how to communicate using those tools. And I feel like that's where you get into really interesting conversations of like, how do you phrase this? What do I offer? Why am I doing this? How do I, how do I pull this off? I feel like founder is really great for that. Um, because as soon as you get there, you're introducing all these exceptions and like, you know, someone's like, should I do this? And it's like, well, you should, but no one else should, unless they've done (laughs) this other thing. You know, there's, there's so many of those nuanced conversations that relate only to that person's brand or music. Yeah. Yeah. There's just a, that's another part is like, um, I think one of the reasons that founder, like no, no matter how much we use this feedback to improve our training stack founder, something like founder is necessary because it, it is really a leap and it's true of any art form, any skill. It's such a leap to get to a point where you're like, there is no right answer, but I, I know so many different ways out of this stuck point that it's fine. There's no actually right answer, you know? Mm-hmm. Um, like filmmaking has been like that for me where I get to this point where it's like, no, there is no like how to shoot a sequence. Like, Oh, go really tight shots and then medium shots and then wide shots. Like, no, no, no. It's never, there's never like an, a definite answer that's correct to what you're facing. You got to use your own like wealth of knowledge about the subject to just get out of jams. And you know, like, it's it takes so long of working at something before you realize that even if you know that you're going to at one point <laughs> yeah it's it's hard to communicate um with trainings alone or really i mean podcasts alone there's you know there's so many things you could point to that we you know produce content wise or or just in terms of inf- information wise we won't ever be able to communicate to an individual artist what they really need to do in a digital marketing landscape. Um, which in a way leaves the conversation so open-ended and so necessary for everyone to be a part of. Um, which is why I think it's, we're doing a great thing that will kind of always be relevant in my eyes. Yeah. I think too, like the community that comes together and founder helps people start thinking out of the box, they're able to identify like, oh, look how that person pivoted and did something special. And so they like swipe from each other sometimes. And in other times, it just gives them the perspective, the way that we get with IndieX, where it's like, okay, we've got this country artist, we've got, you know, these people who are grassroots, we've got these people who have a huge audience, but need to pivot over here. We've got this YouTuber who needs to start monetizing. And so we learn to adapt all these things we know, because now we have a different place that it would be applied. And since they can see this happening in real time from other indies who are the same or differ from them, I think it gives them a perspective and a capability to be able to pivot within their own uh, strategies and the different things that they right. apply to their marketing. Cause now they're inspired by, you know, a range of things versus being stuck in the root of this is my brand and this is how I'm going to promote my stuff. As, as everyone on the team knows we, and this is something I can't talk about yet, but we'll be having some content about soon. Right now, we have a like a random client that onboarded to the agency where we're running 
like we're running Facebook ads to a completely cold audience. This artist has never been heard of before. doesn't have an existing fan base and we're running cold ads to sell a $40 product. And because of the, the specifics of that campaign, it's working. It would never work. And it's something we would never do for anyone else. Like there's, it's such a, <laughs> right. you know what I mean? So like, like, but like, you know, there's people out there who would do that once and then go and recommend that everyone do that. Like, you know what I mean? Right. And just God. say like, look at this crazy yeah. result I got. And it's like, no, 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 no. Everything is so context dependent. Like, so you're right. Like literally what might be right for one person is not going to be right for anybody else. It's everything depends on the scenario. So like the only hope I think you have of empowering independent creatives and this is our main, I guess, thesis is like we have to get them able to think about this in the context. So they need the full set of skills. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, I think, you know, and just to, you know, I'm not going to center on it too much, but like when I, before I found Cirque and joined Entrepreneur, you know, early on. That's one thing that I always, that bothered me about so many trainings. Like a lot of trainings are, in fact, there's a few of them that are like, oh, I was already a little bit famous <laughs> and already had some kind of audience going. Like when I was doing agency stuff before Entrepreneur even, like the clients that I had were people who had a significant base and the things that would work for them would not work for someone who is brand new. You know, and that's one thing that, you know, when uh, I heard Cirque on a podcast and went and bought his fan finder method, I was like, this is authentically for people who don't already have some kind of hype happening. And believe me, I'd spent thousands of dollars on various trainings over my, you know, at that point, seven, eight year career. And this was the first time that I was like, oh, cool. This is something that is not just uh, one person who already had some kind of clout already trying mm -hmm. to teach people the one thing that worked for them that really centered around this clout that they had, like they had some collab with a bigger artist or, you know what I mean? There was already some kind of foundation set for them somewhere. Um, and this was like something that was truly from scratch. And then when I saw like, you know, the success Nino had with it and it was looking at other people since then, even after coming to the company, I was just like, wow, this is really, this is more, far more conceptual than I thought, um, coming into it. Like I knew that digital marketing was faceted obviously, and I'd been doing it for a while, but I realized that, you know, if you come up with the right framework, people can start experiencing each other's successes and failures and getting a broader, again, like what we were saying before, understanding the fastest, getting a broader spectrum of what digital marketing means. In this way, people can now, you know, shift and pivot and learn throughout their projects as they change and not have this knowledge go to a, a bin of invaluable information that they applied once and, and no longer want to follow through with, you know? Uh, and so Founder has just continued to to bolster that in my mind um and uh, what people have done just learning from each other in this concentrated sense has been inspiring for me mm. yeah yeah it's um it's definitely it makes me very hopeful for the future you know like to to know that we can sort of create like these super soldiers <laughs> yeah right super right soldiers. truly though um <laughs> so true please let's not call that <laughs> call it yeah let's never call anything okay. soldier anything yeah Cr I'll be this is a comic book like... reference this is not a military reference <laughs> okay thank god <laughs> cool. that went right over my yeah. head <laughs> um but yeah i kind of wanted to get like are, are there any like sort of standout moments for you guys having coached these rounds like you know are there any inspirational kind of moments or things that like really stood out to you in terms of someone kind of having a breakthrough? I have one. And and then I have one <laughs> assuming it's not the same. Well, I, mine's more of a joke. I'm going <laughs> to, I'm going to invite someone over. Hey, Gracie, can you come in? <laughs> <laughs> oh boy. If she can get She's just going to make a quick, her first yeah, inaugural appearance. Oh, come on over. Gosh. This is Gracie. 
Get down. There, yeah. <laughs> There's hey. Gracie. So hi. Hi. So Gracie walked up to me and Cirque and Jesse at the DIY uh, CD Baby DIY Musician Conference. I know the name. And she had been kind of orbiting around the company for a while and went through the founder class and um, killed it. Like every assignment was baller and she applied it to her holiday slash Christmas launch. And now she's working here. Yes. <laughs> yeah. <Yay. laughs> so and it, it's funny because like we've talked about that before, how everybody who's currently you know, working, um, you know, from the, the technician level down is from, a, is a previous founder right. and Gracie is, and she killed it with her launch, like got a ton of opt-ins. Yeah. I was really, um, excited about it and proud of it for my first time. Like I, I thought it went great. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Nice. Yeah. So it was pretty cool. All right. Thanks for joining. Right. <laughs> <laughs> I just, she's proof in person, you know? So I wanted to like show it's not a figment of my imagination that I made up. Yeah. All right, Jesse, what was yours? <laughs> Mine was um, Katie Thompson's launch. Oh, yeah, Remember that, that was so this wicked. crazy. So Katie, it was so wicked. Like, Katie, um, you know, it, it was a good example because she was applying a pretty tried-and-true entrepreneur tactic, which was like an ultimate album launch. But she was applying nuance to it. She she was like, well, I have this small base, so I'm actually going to adapt it into a pre-order. And also as a beta test and also to get like feedback on offers and stuff. And then, uh, and she kind of did that throughout the course of her, um, her tenure of the class. But then afterwards she actually ended up doing a live launch, but like in that pre-order moment, she sold a ton of merch and like in the midst of that, I think she had, she ended up like buying a sewing machine or something. She ended up like doing DIY variants on the offers and like she kept checking in and being like, Oh, I'm like up at all hours of the night, like thinking up these new things, you know, applying these new tactics. And it was just like, she was totally <laughs> committing to the trench of that moment. And then just, just shipping and like killing it. It was awesome. That's awesome. Yeah. I, uh, I just helped Drex, or you just did too. You helped Drex with his t-shirt funnel and he had to do his first mm-hmm. pick and pack day. And he was like, man, that was a lot of oh work. And I was like, yo, buck up. Yeah. Dude. <laughs> full stack merge. Yeah. Go for full stack merge. I was telling him, I was, like, I was like, yo, you won't have to do that part forever. It's just about, does it, can you sell the yeah. shirts? <laughs> Right. Yeah. Yeah. And once you can. Yeah, absolutely. So, yeah, I think that's something that I Katie really kind of stuck out in my mind as well, um, because she was just so she I mean, not only did she just kill it, she was doing something that was very um, structured by the training. And she was like taking that and then like branching it into all these different tests and these different, you know, variations Um, and I mean, that was what was really inspiring is cause like, okay, so not only did you take the training and make, you know, actually do that to the T and figure out all of, do all this fit font stuff to get all your tech pieces to work in that way. But then you, you improved it, you know, you like built upon it. Mm -hmm. Um, and so that was, and then she killed it. Like it, it totally, it did so great. So yeah, I mean, I think that was that was a feature for me too. Yeah. Hell yeah. Well, it's so awesome. Girl power. It, it's so rad to have like Jesse as a coach, you know, like I loved working with you, Jesse, as a founder. I always thought your music was badass and we're, and like, I really felt like you really got it. And that doesn't happen for every founder when I was, you know, working in the program. Um, it seems like it's happening at a much greater clip now and that's so awesome. And so like kudos to you guys for just like resurrecting that idea and really making it into something that was way better and solves problems for both us and indies um and our mission for indies so like good job guys you guys killed it uh you know and I, i can't wait to see what the program has for the rest of 2020 i know the goal is to be able to offer it to more indies to be able to have more rounds per year and then also branch out into other tracks and other specialties. Um, so that's awesome. And I'm, I'm so excited. (laughs) Yeah. And it's really, it's like not to be cheesy, but it's like four indies by indies because every single thing that we learn, like, (laughs) yeah. (laughs) 
Five eye? Yeah, he did what you do. F I B I. Oh. <laughs> Got it. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's every every single session. Like, we do have a curriculum that I feel really good about. <laughs> Jesse still I'm cracking just up over here. Five eye. <laughs> Um, every single session, even though like we have a curriculum that I feel really confident with, um, every single one gets like care, it's malleable. It gets carefully tweaked every time. And so when the indies are letting us know different things, or even when we're just watching the challenges or successes, the easy wins, it's like, okay, well maybe we don't need to spend so much time on that because everybody's winning on that super quick. Uh, there's a lot of different times like that where we get to, um, tweak it a little bit. So I think every single session that we run, it gets smarter and even better. And it's not because of us. It's because of the students who are in it. Oh yeah. 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 It's so awesome. Uh, I can't, I can't wait to see what, like what is to come of these upcoming rounds. And especially as we get the word out about kind of what it's for to see people kind of hear that and be like, Oh, that's me. I need something like that or that's where I've been at and I want to get I want to get to where these all these indies have gotten. Um I can't I can't wait to see those people go through the program as well. So where can people jump on the next round of founder if they so wish? So if they go to bit.ly forward slash indie founder eight. Mm. Nice. I've said backslash before, but it's a forward slash. I think people know. It's a slash. We what, all know the yeah, right we slash. Know the right slash to use. <laughs> I, I'm saying, right? So yeah, Indie Founder Eight, which is I N D I E Founder Eight. Um, yeah, we actually just filled up February class. February is closed, so the next session will be April thirteenth. I think that's right. Tenth. Whatever, which of those is a Monday? Early, mid-ish April. Yeah, mid-April. That's where we're taking slots for now. So, um, yeah, I'm excited on it. Hell yeah, guys. Well, thank you guys both for coming on and talking to us. And uh, and I'm very excited to, to see this program develop. And obviously there will be a further episode about Indie Founder at some point this year. All right. Hell yeah. yeah. You know, I'll bring it up in every episode. For sure. Yeah. Because it's awesome. <laughs> we won't, we won't I, just, I just, I love it so much. Yeah. <laughs> I'll reference it every single time, guys. Don't worry. Well, yeah. <laughs> One last time, you know, you guys deserve all the congratulations in the world for making this something that's so valuable to the indies and, and is able to create such a change. So kudos to you guys and to the rest Thanks, of buddy. you indies Thanks. listening. Oh, you're welcome. You're welcome, guys. <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> and to the rest of you Indies, we'll see you next week on Creative Chips. Peace.